All right. Happy Wednesday. Hi, Travis. How are you? Hey, Lisa. How's it going? Doing good? Good. Always good to chat with you. Um, seems like I just blinked my eyes and we were in Charlotte having a good time over there. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was so much fun doing the NASCAR Hall of Fame with y'all. And, you know, you guys are always fun to have at the shows. So, um, and I know you guys will be with us again in just a couple of weeks in Orlando. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah. So um, guys that are joining us, um, we do have the uh, Q&A open as well as the chat. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that um, while we're going um, through the webinar today, please feel free to put those in there and we can get those addressed live for you while we're on the webinar today. Um, but always love chatting with um, Highwire. Um, Travis, do you want to kind of give us an overview of who you are and what you do, because you do so many good things for the channel. Sure, yeah. Um, so I'm Travis Ray. I'm director of sales for Overwatch by Highwire Networks. Uh, Overwatch is the MSSP business unit of Highwire Networks. We do a lot of other things as well, um, but specifically I work with the team on cybersecurity and helping our channel partners with uh, 24 seven SOC services, uh, of various different um, layers of security with monitoring uh, that and being able to provide better protection for their customers. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of you, if you've come to our live events, you've seen Travis on stage, we haven't on, had him on cybersecurity panels. So i um, excited to dive in today and kind of talk about some of the mistakes, right, Travis, that you're seeing some of the, M the MSPs as a whole make out there, especially when it comes down to the cybersecurity side of things, right? Um, I mean, we talk a lot about this at the live events. I know you guys do webinars on your own side as well. Um, but what do you think is, you know, really the biggest mistake that you're seeing MSPs out there today make? Yeah, so, you know, in, in my experience, and I've, I've had the uh, fortune of working with probably hundreds of managed service providers over the years now, and one of the most common and biggest mistakes that I've seen is selling on, on the technology, right, uh, which is understandable, right? I mean, it makes sense. You uh, MSPs are typically um, IT guys, right? They're They're into technology, and they they like getting into the weeds on that. Um, but, you know, the, your customers, they're relying on you to be the um, that IT advisor and, and trusted expert. Uh, there's a reason why they need MSPs, and it's because they don't really know a lot about the technology. So when you go in and you're leading with, this is the best product and it does these kinds of things, you're, you're cutting yourself short a little bit because you're not talking about what you're going to do. At the end of the day, you know the, the technology uh, to the customer really doesn't matter that much. Right. Right, They're, they trust you already. They trust that you're getting the best technology and that it's gonna work. Um, a better way to approach that though is more about uh, you know, the outcome, right? What is the outcome you're gonna be providing here? Um, and helping them understand the bigger picture of the cyber risk to their business and how what you're offering them is going to help solve that and and this, how the solution will um, present an outcome that, that they're looking for, right? So starting from there, starting from what is the outcome that you're, you're trying to achieve uh, and not selling on technology is, is one of the, the best um, best approaches that my most successful partners take. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, I think you and I have talked about this a few times, and I always use the analogy of doctors, right? When we go to a doctor and we say, this hurts, right? Or I got in an accident, my leg broke. If they were to tell you all the terminology behind this, that, and the other thing, and here's what we're going to do exactly in the surgery to fix your leg, they don't do that, right? And we also aren't sitting there going, and how much is this going to cost? <laughs> We're like, right. yeah. fix my broken leg. Uh, I don't really care about the the doctor terminology behind it. Give it to me in layman's terms, so like I understand what you're going to do to my body, right? Right. 
Yeah, and if and it, it, it's a great analogy because if you think about it, it, um, it is our it is your body, right? It's, that's the one thing you should be asking all the questions, and we we don't because we trust them, right? We don't ask them about the ingredients in the anesthesia, right? Like, tell me what's what's in the anesthesia that you're giving me, and where did it come from, and where do you procure it? And you're not asking those questions because you're trusting them as your your um, you know your provider, right? Yeah, I mean, and can you imagine how overwhelming it would be if you did sit down with a doctor and they were just like, here's all of those things. And you're like, I didn't need to know all that. Uh, and, right. now, and now I'm freaked out and I don't even know what you're talking about. You'd be so confused. But, you know, like we have to be able to break it down and talk to really the solution and the pain points and what, like you said, the end solution, what problem are you solving or what are you preventing right? Are you giving them peace of mind to sleep at night going, I, you know, I know if something happens, our IT guys got it, right? We yeah, absolutely. Security package. <laughs> yeah. Think about how overwhelming it would be if you, you went into that scenario and they said, well, here's the four or five different options that uh, we had. You pick what you think is best. You know, you, that would be very overwhelming, right? So, you know, you almost have to use an assumptive selling kind of approach when you're talking to your to your customers um, that you it's safe to assume that you know what's best for them and that if you've done a good job of establishing that relationship and rapport that they're going to trust you that they're going to trust your decision mm, absolutely i mean and nobody I mean, if you can imagine going to a doctor guys and they're like hey okay so we're going to fix your broken leg i'm going to give you some surgery now you can have surgery a no anesthesia, no, you know, and you're like, oh, oh, heck, you know, that would not even be a thought in your mind. You're like, give me all the things, you know, like, right. <laughs> you're going to like do all this crazy stuff to my leg where I need all of the, the, the drugs really. I, I don't want to feel that. So it's right. just like a breach. Do you want to feel that? Right. Here's what that might look like. Here's what that might feel like rather than here's how much this is going to cost you. That's, you know. We don't talk sure. about costs at the doctor. We're not like, and how much is this uh, surgery going to cost? We're like, do it. Right. Yeah. It's all about the outcome you're trying to achieve and understanding what what it takes to get there, but not necessarily the, uh, you know, the old uh, sell the cake, not the ingredients approach, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's obviously technology is an important part of it. What technology you're selecting to power that service you're providing. Um, but that's the value that you're bringing is knowing what's the right technology for that customer, um, trying to sell them on why this is better than another one. Or, or um, a, a lot of times I'll see where they're in a competitive situation against another MSP and they start kind of dissecting the technology that's the other, you know, their com competition is using and trying to, you know, sell why their, you know, their technology is better than the other that then you're going to lose your customer really quickly in that kind of conversation. You're going to lose your prospect. Um, but if you're staying focused on what is the objective that they're trying to accomplish and why you feel like what you have selected and, and how you do it is going to get them there and laying them out, laying that out in, in a way that makes them very comfortable yeah. um, and really solidifying yourself as that trusted Con, you know, consultant, um, that's how you're going to win more deals. Absolutely. I mean, and it's better to have those conversations early on, especially when it comes to risk mitigation, right? Because it's better to sit down in a QBR or a TBR and say, here's the things we prevented versus right. having to call them and say, uh, so on Sunday, you guys got hacked, um, like, you know, and they're like, well, I thought you were doing those things. And they're like, mm, we don't have anything in place. You didn't want right. that. But did we sell, you know, it's, it's just, you know, Chris always talks about it's like having insurance, like flood insurance, right? We don't buy flood insurance with the hope and expectation that we, our house gets flooded and we get to use the insurance but it's there. Right. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's, you know, where, again, where it comes into being honest about what it is you're doing for your customers and what you're not. Um, that's, that's another one of the five things I see a lot of times um, is 
being a little too uh, a little too soft, right? Um, sometimes you got to be able to to give a uh, an answer that that customer isn't going to necessarily love because you're being truthful um, and you're you're not selling on price, you're selling on value, right? I've run into so many partners uh, talking with them and and helping them out with their sales efforts where their challenge is, well, my customers already think I'm doing this, right? I hear that all the time. That's, that's, yeah. why, that's why we're not having as much success selling uh, our new cyber package as we thought we would. Because when we go into the customer, we run into that objective and we don't know how to be able, we don't know what to do. Um, the, the first step there, in, and this is all things I've learned from my most successful partners and, and just my own experiences working with MSPs over the years, yeah. is be honest uh, from the very beginning about what it is you're doing and what you're not, um, and don't cut corners or anything like that when it comes to expressing exactly what you're going to deliver for them and being honest about how the you know what they're getting now if they decide to go with that you know lighter package what that exposes them to and and being again I mean, you're probably going to say a lot but the trusted advisor trusted consultant uh, to, to help them understand the risk uh, that they're leaving themselves exposed to and that helps you get around selling on price which is another one of the, the big mistakes i see where going in with the mindset of this customer is not going to want to you know, they're not going to have a lot of money to spend, right? Taking that approach as soon as you go into it is you're limiting yourself right away. If you're you're not selling on price, you're selling on value and you're selling on the outcome, um, you're going to have a lot more success. That customer is going to be willing to pay more than what you probably thought they were. And I've, I've got partners who have been in Chris's group um, and followed the seven-figure mythology for a while. And I've heard them talk about I couldn't believe that I sold $300 a seat. Couldn't, yeah. I, they were genuinely shocked. Um, and, and it's because they're following the, you know, a better way of one, your, your mindset going into it is so important. If you're going into an opportunity thinking you probably aren't going to win it, I can almost guarantee you won't. Um, yeah. And you're wasting your time if you're thinking that way, right? So um, selling on price um, and trying to be the, the least expensive solution is just, you're going to hurt yourself and you're not actually really doing what you need to be for that that client. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I think, you know, it's, 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 and the worst thing I think that you can do is, is, really really like you said when it comes down to price don't give discounts don't start pulling your stack apart right because especially the cybersecurity stack right if they don't want it make sure we have like a a denial of service agreement or something like that to cover yourself um, because at the end of the day if you don't take those precautions you're eating the risk sandwich right and right. I really think of it as like, are we really going to offer surgery without anesthesia? No. <laughs> right? yeah, absolutely. You need to yeah. like make it that. And I think, you know, for a lot of you out there, if your price is your price, right? The doctor cost is the doctor cost. You can chunk it up and do payments based on how long you want to pay for right? Sure. You want to yep. pay this cost? Okay, then you get a five-year term. But don't compensate or don't pull out of the stack to compensate on cost, right? And that's a, that's a huge thing because that's where, you, I mean, that's super dangerous, right? Yeah, and it's, it's tough for you to operationalize as well when you've got a bunch of different customers doing a bunch of different things um, and having to remember, well, Who's got EDR and who doesn't? Who is monitoring logs and who isn't? Um, and and just it's exposing you to risk, and you're you're really not delivering the kind of value as a trusted uh, advisor to your customers that they deserve. And that is where you know, it, it, it's tough. It sounds like it's it's difficult. I I totally understand it. I, I'm in sales too. I get yeah. dragged into pricing conversations all the time. 
Um, and that's a big reason why I don't talk about price until I've understood the need that's there, um, the value I'm going to bring and have a clear path to achieving the outcome that they're looking for to present before I even really get into price, you know, because you don't want to have to deal with sticker shock, but you also don't want to have to discount and, and cheat yourself out of revenue you deserve for doing a really good job. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, the trusted advisor piece is, is, you know, really huge as well, because once they trust you, like price kind of goes out the door. If you're like, Hey, we got to put this in place. Cause it's going to do this, this and that. And they trust you. They're going to say, all right, go ahead. They're not going right. to fight you. I mean, and think about it now. Now we're going to go from doctors to lawyers, but imagine you go into a lawyer and you're like, hey, okay. And he goes, okay, well, you could do A, B, or C. And then you want to know, like, well, what would what would you do? Like, I don't know. This is why I'm paying you all this money. Right? I'm not a lawyer. You're the lawyer. Right. Yeah. And you know, there's there's sometimes you have to be able to explain, you know, the return on investment, right? And be able to articulate that. Um and, and sometimes that means going through scenarios, right? Of, well, so here's what happens if, if I drop my price, that means I've got to take this out. This leaves you exposed to this. Then when that, that exposure uh, becomes a compromise, now you're dealing with this. You're spending you know, this much money dealing with this, or you're losing this much money because of business interruption and circle it back to, this is why this is in my stack. This is why it's in my package and how I help customers and, and have some, you know, uh, some examples of that, you know, like be ready to talk through that of, this is why I'm not willing to compromise on the integrity of what I do for my clients. And if, you know, we're not gonna be the perfect fit for everybody and we might not be for you and that's okay, right? That's, that is one of the most important things to understand in, in sales in general, but especially security because it's not commoditized. So com security is pricing and, and all kinds of things are all over the place. Um, and a lot of MSPs are used to um, leveraging more commoditized solutions in their stack, things that are the pricing is very well known in the marketplace um, and they can shop you, right? Don't let them shop you because the, nobody else can come and provide the, the guidance that you're bringing. Right. Right. And I think, you know, that also, you know, what they fail to realize is the risk you're taking as the managed service provider by relinquishing them from having that tough conversation about the security piece. Because right. like you've already said, they are going to assume that you're doing that for them already. So not if, but when something happens, you're going to be their first call. And that's an even more uncomfortable conversation to be like, hey, well, you didn't sign this. You didn't want to do this. Yep. And then they're going to be like, well, you didn't explain it better to me. <laughs> right? I'd be right. like, I didn't understand why that was so important until, yeah. you know, the event happens. Right. And that's where it even you know, we had a whole discussion about this um, at Q3 on stage about the, the cyber insurance piece for the MSPs, right? And how yeah, that absolutely. eventually affects you. And you won't be able to get insured if you're not taking those precautions. And yes, they're hard conversations to have, but it's almost like when you're vetting your husband or wife, right? Mm -hmm. You have to ask those questions. Do you want to have kids? Do you want to live in this state? Do you want to live in a mobile home, right? <laughs> like right. If someone would be like, I want to live in a, a van. I'd be like, I can't do that. I have like sure. eight yeah. I mean, hello. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's not the right fit. Um, and, and I think that goes to another um, general kind of common mistake that I see a lot is, is the prospecting that uh, my some of my partners do. And it's, it's complex um, prospecting as a whole is its own beast, right? Um, some of the mistakes I see around that are not not work, not approaching the right 
you know, prospects, mm -hmm. um, settling for prospects and trying to win prospects that aren't the right fit for you. Yeah, there are going to be, there are times where you have to be able to walk away from a, from a, a potential client because they're not the right fit for you. Let them go find the, you know, the, the provider who is the right fit for them, who's willing to do that, um, whatever it is that, that they need um, that isn't ideal for you, right? It's the same thing with any other relationship. Um, you wouldn't spend a lot of time and focus on a relationship that isn't going anywhere, whatever, whatever kind of relationship that is. Same thing with with customers uh, and prospects, right? So when you're when you're prospecting, when you're if in one, everybody should be prospecting. Yeah. Um, like find however you do that. I've seen I've got a lot of partners who do it a lot of different ways. Whether they're doing it in house and they have inside salespeople or, or you know uh, people out on the street going out and, and finding prospects, or they're outsourcing that to somebody, or they're relying on you know referrals and word of mouth, which is a very effective um way to prospect right, it, right. it's got its ceiling right you know but um you know you need to be dating that customer and that prospect uh just as much as they are you right oh yeah and and be willing to to break up with that prospect before you get married because you you know what's coming every every partner i've ever worked with has had customers who are just a headache that they, they're they their least favorite customer and they were one of their longest customers. And it's because you're an abusive relationship. Yeah, it, I mean, and what you allow will continue, right? We get a lot of MSPs that are like, how do I get them to stop calling me on a Saturday? I'm like, well, do they have your cell phone number? Yeah, that right. was probably not a great, great idea. And then it goes to, well, what's your get out of bed number? Yeah. What is gonna? Right. What, what number is gonna be like? Okay, I will come help you on a Saturday. You know me. You know I like shoes, so I'm like I need like five thousand dollars if you want me to come help you on a Saturday. Right. right? Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, you know, think, you know both boundaries you are important. To, you have to be okay with saying no if they are not a good fit for you. Like you said, realize the headache you're about to take on. And right. It's, it's like a leech. They're hard to get rid of. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely is. And, you know, I, I can understand where, um, where, you know, those, those partners of mine are coming from. They're like, dude, I, I want all the revenue I can get. And I'm like, I'm, I'm building a business here. It's hard for me to walk away from, from potential revenue. Um, that's totally understandable. But if you're focusing your efforts on better prospects, you're going to be getting better customers. Um, you're not going to be getting into some of those abusive customer relationships where they 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 abuse the the level of customer experience you want to provide. There's I've worked in other in you know industries as well. There is no uh, group or, or sector that bends over backwards more for their customers than managed service providers. They go above and beyond farther and more than managed service providers. Um, and it's because they do have that deep relationship with their customers. Um, and usually the ones that are their most painful customers are also their longest customers. Um, yeah. um, and if you really go back and you look at it and say, is the time I'm spending on this headache customer, is it really worth it? Um, probably not. And the reason why that customer is still with you is because they're abusing the relationship. The, the abuser is never the one to break off a relationship. Correct. So, so they're going to stick around and they're going to keep taking up your bandwidth over and over and over. So the root of the problem there is the prospecting that you were doing, right? You were taking on customers that were not an ideal fit for you. Um, and another prospecting mistake I see a lot is is limit limiting yourself on the prospects you go after um some of my most successful partners that i have seen have tremendous growth have realized they can go sell their security only packages to bigger and better companies that don't need them for the traditional managed services but they need help with security and they will take a meeting with somebody just to try to get their head around 
they're they're the cyber risk to their business. Um, and they're selling to companies who have an IT team and they have really, really positive relationships with those customers because they're working with people that talk like them, that think like them. Yep. You know, they're not working with, you know, the owner of a of a plumbing company who has, you know, 100 employees and not a single technology person on staff. You are their technology person. You're speaking different languages. So they've been able to take their cyber package for mid-market and go move up into that market that right. they they couldn't even get through the door before trying to sell their managed, you know, traditional managed services. Um, and, and I'm glad to help talk to anybody who wants to learn a little bit more about how to do that and how to build a stack that those bigger mid-market companies are interested in talking to you about as well. I mean, and that's huge because that's like looking into the, the co-managed space, right? And like you said, that's 100% an easier conversation to have with somebody that speaks the same language that you do that can go internally and pitch it for you, really. Right. Yeah, right. you know, have that champion inside. And, uh, you know, MSPs are, are usually, in my experience, they are fantastic at talking to, um, you know, the leaders of business. Right. That's that's usually who they're dealing with. They're dealing with the owners of companies. They're dealing with um, the people who are running the company. That's most their customers. That's that's the relationship they have. So it's it's not a huge leap for them to go talk to a CEO of a mid market company and have their champion now inside who's like, yes, if we had this is what we're talking about. They're going to help us achieve these goals. We've been trying to understand how to accomplish for a year. And it just becomes a, almost a no-brainer. And some of the easiest sales my partners have had have been some of their biggest. It's mind-blowing um, for them. No, I mean, and, you know, and kind of going back to those, like, clients that are, like, the, the PETA clients, right? The pain-in-the-ass clients, right? That are, if you're picking and choosing pieces of the stack and you're giving them special pricing and they have all these, like, you know, backdoor things that slows down your scalability and your growth because that's not scalable, right? If like customer over here is on package A and B and C and D, right? Every time your tech has to answer a ticket, that's like a lot more stuff that they have to do a lot more time versus everybody has the same stack. Right. right? Yeah. It allows you to have more operationalized processes um, and it allows you to do a better job for your customers as well, right? And when you identify a challenge in your processes that you can fix that and it makes it a better product for all of your customers, right? So it's it's very much about trying to get better at uh, the things you do and realizing the value that you have. Don't undersell yourself. Uh, that's, that's by far the biggest mistake I see partners make, especially when it comes to selling security is they go in with a mindset of this customer is probably not going to want to pay a lot for security, right? So they're already in their minds thinking about how they're going to have to, to, to sell on price and make those concessions um, when they should be going and thinking about how they're going to help this customer and they're going to impact this customer's business in a way that that customer can't even imagine doing business without them anymore. You know, it's, it's very much a mindset kind of thing. Um, and and believing in your value. If you don't believe in the value of, of what you're selling to your customers, you need to go back to the drawing board and understand that. Like, why don't I feel like um, my, my product, my offering is worth the price I expect for it? Right, right. And I mean, I think that's a huge thing because you're right, it's mindset, right? If you don't take pride and value in your own offering and you're not implementing and executing those things on your own house even right sure. yeah. that's gonna 100 percent be a harder sale versus if you have can say well yes i use this internally your you know bob down the street uses it internally the hospital down there uses the same thing i mean and we we call that news jacking right have some sufficient things to tell them in regards to these things happen open your eyes they're starting to be on the news and things like that with the larger breaches but like bring it down to their scale and their level right if you're talking to 
a doctor's office, use a similar story. Don't be like, well, the bank down the street. And they're like, well, we're not a bank. Sure. <laughs> it makes yeah. no sense. Yeah, that's it's funny you say that. I was just up on another one of my uh, channel account managers where we're onboarding a new partner and security is kind of new to them. And they asked us for, um, you know, kind of a guide on prospecting and what kind of questions should they be asking and how do they qualify and how do they do discovery? And part of that process is the the value prop at the end, right? The, the this is why the compelling event, why you want to take the follow up meeting. And one of the things we put on that list that they should be talking about is how they're helping similar customers, right? We've helped we've helped another construction company with you know your size do this and the outcome, right? Right. That matches up with what you've learned in discovery and qualification that um, you know meets that need, right? What is that actual pain point they're trying to solve? Um, you know, a lot of a lot of MSPs. Um, you know, they, they're not sales guys per se, right? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not, right? They're, there's a reason why they got into running a, a technology business. Um, right. Their acumen, their, their acumen, their strength is technology. So you almost have to approach it as something totally different than what you're familiar with a lot of times from my partners and learn how to do that discovery and qualification process, Right. Uh, again, going back to picking the customers who are right for you and you're right for them and your life is easier and you, you know, your revenue, your bottom line is better. So um, being able to tell, you know, uh, a prospect or, you know, somebody you're talking to, hey, uh, even if it's an existing customer and you're trying to upsell them on your new security offering, mm-hmm. right? Hey, I've got three or four other customers that are similar to you. This is why they chose to upgrade to this cybersecurity package. This is what it's doing for them. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you do this, All right? That, that assumption selling, um, because you are their trusted advisor, that makes it easier uh, than, you know, to, to get that yes. And sometimes, you know, because sales might not necessarily be where they've had a lot of their experience, um, it's difficult for them to ask the hard questions. Right. Are you if if you're if you get a no, right? Sometimes you have to come back and ask the hard question and say, okay, you're telling me you're not ready to to do this yet. Are you prepared for when a cybersecurity incident disrupts your business and I can't help you? Yeah. And like and what you guys do a really good job of, in my opinion, is letting helping them understand what that will actually look and feel like right right from a cost perspective from a a data recovery perspective to all of the other things that they don't even realize like yes you have to report that you had a breach you have to tell all your clients that is not a fun conversation to have right Right. when they're like wait I have to like literally tell all my clients yeah you're gonna lose clients if you're like hey we didn't have the proper security on the back end to hold your credit card. So all of you have a break, right? That's right. 100% a bad day for everybody right there. And what I love that you said is sell on the why. Explain to them the why. It doesn't matter like if we're going to sell you like a clock like Big Ben. I'm not going to be selling you all every cog and wheel that's within the clock. I'm going to say like it rings every hour and it makes this beautiful time. Right. right yeah. It, it does its job. You know, who cares the parts inside that, that do as long as it's consistent and reliable. Um, and, you know, a lot of times the you don't want to. One thing I would discourage too is is don't sell on fear and uncertainty and doubt. Yes. We don't need to do that in security anymore. There, everybody out there knows now that there is a risk to their business from cybercrime. That's just the world we live in now. Um, you know, years ago, the objection a lot of my partners would get is, hey, look, we're just, you know, we're just a small manufacturer in, you know, Lawrence, Kansas. No, Chinese hackers and Russian hackers aren't looking, they're not hunting us, right? That was like a common objection they used to get. And it was completely untrue. That's that's not the challenge anymore. Um, You know, just about everybody you go talk to who owns a business, if they have technology, they have email, 
they are they have cyber risk and they are starting to understand that now and they really don't know what to do about it this isn't a um, a risk that they learned about managing in business school 10 years ago much less 20 or 30 so right. they are they are literally starting from scratch on a whole new problem um, that has become the number one risk to businesses globally that they don't know anything about. That's your opportunity to come in and be that trusted advisor, to be that consultant, um, to talk to them, to educate them, spend that time with them, earn their trust. Because that's really at the end of the day, when it comes to security, that's what you're selling. You're selling trust. And if somebody tells you no, if a customer, especially an existing customer says, no, I don't want that additional security. A lot of times, I, I know that a lot of partners like to use the, um, you know, the the liability waiver, you know, stuff like that, right? Well, then you got to sign this piece of paper that says we're not responsible when something happens. I that's a that's a good selling tool. Um, but what's a better selling tool to really get their attention and say, I understand. Um, you should start looking for another provider. Your renewal is coming up in six months. Now is the time to start looking because I I don't feel like we're the right fit for you anymore. Yeah, that gets their that'll get their attention. And when you, it's it's a lot easier for my partners to fire some of their PETA customers when they've increased their MRR 20, 30 grand. What's losing that two grand that was the hardest two grand you were making a month, right? Yeah. That that makes it a lot easier. Um, and and asking those hard questions and and drawing that line in the sand. Sometimes you just need to um, because they're used to kind of getting what they want uh, and maybe not paying as much as you've been asking for. So you got to reset some of those boundaries and ask those hard questions. Are you prepared for this to happen? And I can't help you. Let yeah. them let that really sink in. Let them think. Well, you're my you're my guy. If you can't help me, I don't know anybody who can. Yeah. Now you you've changed the whole dynamic of I'm not paying for this, you know, if uh, kind of conceptual thing of cybersecurity. I'm paying for for your guidance and your help when something goes wrong. That that's worth the money to them. But if you don't set that boundary and tell them, okay, if you're going to pass on the, you know, upgrading to this new cybersecurity package, um, I just want to make sure you know when when something like you know X Y Z happens, can't help you. I won't be able to I won't be able to help you and pick up that phone um, if it's not about what we're already doing together. And it's tough. Like it's it sounds aggressive. You know, and that's not, you know, how most of my MSPs uh, personalities are to to be kind of hard with their customers like that. But you're doing them a disservice if you're not. Yeah. And that like really takes me back to like the, the lawyer situation. Right. If I would be like, I am paying you. I'm not a lawyer. I didn't go to school for that. I didn't read all the books. I didn't take the test. This is why I'm hiring you. And I want to know I want to have confidence right? That like, yes, I can tell you what I want, but like, I expect you to know how to do all the things legally. That's why I hired right. you. I don't want to deal with that. And like, like Google, whatever for days and days and days and days. Right. And then really like define that risk for them. Right. And if you think about it, like people who try to get like really big life insurance policies, right they have to ask you a lot of uncomfortable questions about your lifestyle. And, you know, they sometimes have people monitor you for like the really big guys because they're like, okay, this guy hikes mountains. He's a dirt bike rider. Like we cannot give him a $5 million policy. He's right. a lot of risk. Yeah. Right. And Absolutely. sometimes when they go like, we can't insure you, they go like, well, what do I need to change about my lifestyle for you to insure me? Because they are so used to you as an IT person saying yes to everything that when you say no, you're right. It's kind of like a, wait, what? What do you yeah. mean you won't work with me? Right. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a wake up call um, and, you know, setting some of those boundaries and making sure that that's very clear to them um, and then sticking to it. Yep. Right. 
I I was just helping a couple of weeks ago. I was helping one of my partners um, who was dealing with a cybersecurity incident for a customer. And when he told me who it was, I was like, oh, I thought they decided to wait till next year. Like, well, they did. Well, why are you helping them right now? Yeah. Well, because no one else is going to help them. Right. You know, like at least go in right now and tell them, hey, look, you got to upgrade to this package right now. Now it's already too late. Don't make it even worse. Um, so setting those boundaries and sticking to it, you know, is really important um, because, you know, all my partners always want to bend over backwards for their customers. And that's awesome. Um, that's that is why uh, this industry hasn't been regulated yet. Because they do such a good job of regulating themselves and policing themselves and going above and beyond, not screwing over customers, right? Uh, Not to the point where, you know, federal and government regulation is is required. At the same time, you've got to be able to tell your customers no. Sometimes you've got to tell a customer no. Um, When a prospect wants you to, um, you know, get outside of what you do best and how you have built a process tell them no and be okay with walking away. Um, A lot of my partners have told me, you know, we've walked away from prospects who wanted us to carve things out and, and do things though. They liked the way that their previous provider did some things. They wanted to stick with that. And that's not how we did things. And we walked away. And six months later, that customer came back and said, you know what? Uh, We haven't found anybody else who's even close to what you guys do and what you're offering. So we're going to have to change our lifestyle a little bit to make this work because we don't, you know, we, we value everything else you guys do and saying no has turned into yeses for them. Uh, And it's, it's just something that's difficult. It's, it's counterintuitive, uh, but it's one of the, the word no is one of the best things, one of the best tools a salesperson has, and especially in security where there's no room for error. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, and you, I mean, I know the first no is uncomfortable and you're like, uh, right. But like, we've seen a lot of, you know, guys in our seven figure program where they're like, okay, they didn't buy the security package. They signed the denial of service agreement. I explain, you know, everything and they, you know, they feel like they lost. Well, three, four or five weeks go by breach okay, <laughs> here's here's the conversation we had. Here's why I had the conversation. But now you're paying more. Right. right. You're paying a lot more than if you would have just, we would have just had this in place to begin with. Now you have like a ransom to pay and all of those kind of crazy things. So it's about being able to show that to them early on, right? And that's where take the complexity out for them. Don't be like, well, the IP and this and that, like they don't care. Sure. Am I going to get my data back? Am I going to be able to work the next day? How many hours is this going to, you know, take my company offline or out, out of business for really, because those that's dollars and cents to them. That makes sense to them every time. Sure. Right. And that, and that's how you should be positioning your, your services as well. Um, a lot of times I see partners when, and I, I like to be as, in, as engaged and collaborative in, in sales efforts with my partners as, as they would, they want to bring me in. Um, so I've been able to sit at the table and, and be a part of a watching a partner propose their solution and what you know, their offerings. Um, and they, they rushed it. They rushed it. And what they're talking about is not resonating with the, with the client with that prospect because they they've rushed a little bit instead of getting down to the really fundamental things right and focusing on that fo- focusing on you know the the what ifs right the what if this happens how do you handle it what if um your 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 email is down for a week what would you do right? <laughs> yeah you know asking questions like that um you're you're setting yourself up for success because you can come back and as part of your proposal, you have a plan for those what if scenarios you threw out there that they don't have an answer for. And now it's if your email, if this happens, here's how we handle it, right? This is what we put into place to manage that risk. Um, 
and and always, you know, under promise and over deliver. I feel like MSPs are always are already very good at that. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of natural for them. It's the same thing with security, right? Don't ever promise magic bullets that are going to cure everything, but talk about the big picture and help them put a roadmap together that managing cyber risk is a continuous effort, right? And helping them understand this is what we're going to achieve with what we're doing right now, right? With what I'm proposing right now, we're going to achieve these things. And those things we talked about, this is what will happen now. When that scenario happens, we talked about now this will happen with the, with, if you sign up with us going through that. And then also saying, this is what I want to do down the road, showing them that you have a plan. And again, going back to that being a consultant and not just saying, Hey, I'm just here to like sell you my widget. Right. Right. But I'm here to help you over time, continue to grow your business with fewer interruptions, uh, with, with less uh, fires that you have to put out and better efficiency, those kinds of things. Uh, security is a great way to be able to have those conversations uh, with, with a lot of your customers because they're curious. You know? um, and if they're not asking you, hey, how are you protecting me from ransomware already? Um, <laughs> you need to be having that conversation with them if they're not already asking you. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, and like you said, asking simple questions like, what would you do if your email was down for a week? For most businesses, there that is not negotiable. They're like, oh, right. I, I, I could never have that happen. I would lose all this money, right? Business owners understand the dollars and cents of things. So if you say your emails, you cannot function as a business for seven days, they're going to go, okay, that's $3 million. And we can't take that kind of a hit. Right. So then they say, okay, they're going to, like you said, they are going to pay the cost, right? Because at the end of the day, they don't want to look like the people that like are in Florida or were in Florida when the hurricane happened and like didn't have the flood insurance, right? Sure. Everyone's like, you're dumb. Yeah. Like you live in Florida, you get hurricanes every year. You don't have flood insurance. Like, and the breach landscape changed so significantly, right? With COVID. Everybody went sure. to work from home. Everyone's working off these home networks. You know, their kid is in the other room playing the Xbox. It's like a whole thing. And you're no longer in this like one big bubble where you're like, oh, everything's safe. I'm in the office, you know, all the IT right. guys down the, down the hallway, like I'm good. All right, yeah, there's, there is a lot less control. Um, and And when you... When you start losing control, um, panic starts to set in, right? It's the same thing that happened with a lot of of my partner's customers. Um, They were so busy trying to figure out how to adapt to the new normal. They weren't looking ahead. That's where, uh, you know, that's really where you get to step in as a managed service provider and say, look, I know we've got this immediate need, but we need to also be thinking about two steps ahead and what what this is going to mean, what this exposes us to. And here's how I'm going to help you fix that. Always position it as here's how I'm going to help you. Right. Um, And, you know, again, going back to like, you don't want to sell on fear. Right. Right. So when you ask those questions, the, the what if questions, you know, position them as a thought exercise. Yeah. Right. Like, well, let's do a little tabletop exercise here. Um, you know, you come into work and, you know, Monday morning at 8 a.m. and you can't access email. What happens next? And let them think through it, right? Let them, let them actually think through it. Instead of it being, oh, well, if you don't do this, one day your email is going to get compromised and you're going to be screwed. That's selling on fear. If you're positioning it as a what if exercise with them and letting them think through it themselves and understand the, the possibilities and really absorb how, how desperate they would be, you don't need to sell on, on fear. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and it's kind of like giving them like an old school fire drill, right? Here's how we get out of the building. If it is on fire, here is what we do next. And we all go, you know, <laughs> you, and, and it, like you said, it's about sitting down and helping them create that roadmap. They might not be able to take on everything day one, 
create that roadmap and show them how to get there and why they need the why, right? Why we need to get from point A to point B. Because like you said, cybersecurity is evolving every single day. Yeah. And you guys have so much knowledge behind that. That's all you guys do, right? You look at it, you touch it, you feel it every day. And that's where you guys are also so valuable in the MSP community because like Travis said, he can go on those calls and help you and, you know, kind of help you back up what you're trying to, to get across to the client, right? Because Travis has these conversations all day long. Yeah, and and I love being able to um, to coach my my partners um, and and enable them for success. You know, we're a channel only company, so we are only as successful as our partners. Our success is completely dependent on their success as well, so we're very invested in that. Um, and and that's a big part of I think what we do really well is helping partners with understanding how to how to discover and qualify opportunities better, right? Um, sitting down and spending time with them on that kind of thing. We're, we're, you know, we're investing our time because we see the potential in the, in our partners and we, we need them. We need them to be successful so we can be as well. And if you're not getting that from your, your, your partners as an MSP, you need to be asking them why, you, you know, Hey, I need help with this. Why am I not getting that help? Right. Um, and if they're not able to help you, there are other, there's other vendors and other partners out there who can, and they, they should be helping you be more successful in your selling efforts and stepping in and filling in some of those gaps that isn't your forte. It's not your skill set. That's, that's part of the value they should be bringing, just like a lot of the value that you bring to your customers. Yeah, I mean, you can't be an expert in everything, especially when things just change so rapidly, right? And you guys are kind of like the heartbeat of that. You watch it, you see it, you can speak to it and bring them in as an expert, right? They, I mean, I've seen you do it. I've seen Dave Barton do it. I, I mean, and it provides so much more value to the client because while you might be able to answer like the super technical questions, um, you guys are going to help them have that conversation in a much more palatable way, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, um, that is my skill set. Uh, and that's what, that's my profession. That's what I have honed my skills around is being able to, to ask those questions and dig in and un uncover that that pain point that the customer doesn't even know how to articulate, right? Especially when it comes to security, they don't even understand the, the, the very basic concepts, but they know it's something they need to figure out, oh, yeah. right? That's a huge opportunity for, for a salesperson to come in and be that, that consultant who helps them and earns their trust and makes a customer for life who's willing to pay what you're asking for because you're delivering. Right. I mean, and like you've said, like you have worked in the MSP space for so long. So like, you know what it's like to be on that side of the fence. You've seen it sure. day in, day out. It's not, I mean, and you're just there to help them. Right. Because I mean, how many times have you seen an MSP go in and they're like cybersecurity, whoop, right. It goes sideways really quickly because the client is like, I don't like, I don't want to talk about like all the things. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's, it's all about how you pr approach the conversation and how you position uh, what it is you, how you want to help them and the need, because a lot of times they, they don't know, they don't, they don't know what they don't know. And that's where that education part comes in. Um, and if you're not totally comfortable with it, there are people in your ecosystem who are, whether it's Highwire and, and Overwatch or another vendor that you work with, those are resources you should be lever leveraging to improve your sales efforts. Um, I know from personal experience, because I've worked for an MSP, right? You know, um, I, was, I was account executive for a managed service provider. Um, and I, I knew what it was like to go in and, and try to pitch commoditized type services where everyone expects this dollar amount per hour, and, you know, those kinds of things. 
right? Yeah. Uh, that's that's tough to sell. Security is a whole nother conversation and, and it's actually a lot easier than, than you'd think. Yeah, I mean, don't make it too complex. And I think that's where, yes, it, it is complex at the end of the day, right? But that's for you to know, just like it's for the doctor to know all the odds and ends of how they're going to cut your leg open and like stitch you back together. You don't need to know how to give stitches or like fix anything in there. You just need to be like, okay, I can walk again. Right. Yeah. Right? What's the outcome? Right. So, yeah. I've, like I've literally do. got, yeah, I've literally got a pain and I want to get it to an outcome where I'm not in pain anymore. Right. That's, that's really what you're trying to do as a salesperson and with security, you have a, a unique opportunity in technology because it's it's not well known, right? It is it's not something it's something your customers want to be educated about. And if you're making those efforts to to educate them, um, it will bear fruit for you. Yeah, I mean, and that's you know something you know that's why we talk about doing those QBRs, those TBRs, and having those conversations often and early, right? Because we can't prevent everything from happening, but we can protect the best we know how, right? Right. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's about having people like you in the back pocket to be like, oh my gosh, this new like the log four J, right? Some people are like, what's that? I would be, I mean, I'm personally, I'm pretty sure I called Dave Barton. I was like, what is this? Don't right. And he was like, okay. And it, it took me a little bit because I'm blonde. You know, it was like, we, and I was like, hang on. But I mean, it's about understanding, like, because if you go and you're like, well, the log 4J, the client's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Right. I'm not going to sit yeah. down for 30 minutes with you really ever, because that's overwhelming. And that's time. Time is money. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and those news events, um, I like news jacking. That's a really good term. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that, but those are opportunities to talk to your customers, right? If nothing else to tell them, Hey, we, we scanned your environment. We look for this compromise and you know, you're good, or we found it and we remediated it right there. That is how they sleep better at night and how you keep a customer forever. And I've got partners who are doing that and not communicating it to their clients. And I'm like, that's such a missed opportunity right there. You know, um, continually educate them on not just security, but what you're doing in the background. You know, it's kind of a funny thing with security. If you're doing a really great job of protecting your clients, they're not experiencing any pain. It's happening in the background. They don't know the value you're bringing. So it's really important to demonstrate it every opportunity you get and show that to them um, so that they go, oh, okay, yeah, that's why I'm sleeping better at night because this is happening in the background that I don't ever even see. I don't feel the disruption. Um, so it can be hard for them to understand the value if you're not doing that. Yeah, I mean, and that's a much better conversation to have with them versus, well, you've submitted 58 service, you know, tickets in the last month. And they're like, I don't care. Like what Susan had a problem with her inbox and it needed to be bumped up in size like that. I don't care about that versus, oh yeah, you guys got hit here. We, we were able to, you know, keep that from even hitting you. Did you guys notice any latency or lag, right? Anything like that. They're going to be like, no, like, great. Well, that's, you know, that's what your cybersecurity package is doing for you. Right. right. Yeah. You got to, it's continuously selling the value of what you're doing. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to, to get those renewals too. Yeah. And like you said, educating them, continually educating them. Oh, did you know this new thing? Yeah. We got this in place though. So you're good, but like a uh, company down the street, not so good for them. Right. <laughs> and some of my partners who do a really good job of that, um, they get tons of referrals. Because that customer, they you know they're they know other business owners that it's a small world. Um, they network with each other a lot, and they'll hear someone say like, "Oh yeah, man, we got we had this issue with wire fraud, and we wired away twenty thousand dollars that we'll never get back." And it's you know they're they're frustrated, and that my partner's customer goes, "Man, you got to talk to Bill. All right, he'll yeah. take care. Like he can help you with this, and make sure this doesn't happen to you again." Um, so, you know, helping them understand how you're preventing that from happening to them is going to actually bring you more business. 
because they're going to go tell their friends. They're going to go tell people in their network when they hear those stories um, or when they get asked, right? Yeah, I mean, and business owners ask other owners questions. How are you doing this? What phone system do you have? What copier machine do you have? You know, what furniture, you know, all kinds of things. I mean, and yes, it gets down to the nitty gritty sometimes because, I mean, not that anyone wants to say, yes, I got breached for $20,000 on a wire fraud and I'm never getting it back. You probably don't want to go around talking about that because it's embarrassing because you're going to be like, what? You don't have the things in place? And you're like, right. yeah, you need to go talk to Bob because Bob has all of the things that's never going to happen to me. And if, if you're doing a good job of that continuous um, education about what you're doing, helping them feel comfortable understanding, uh, you know, what cybersecurity and cybercrime is all about, that's where you get those, you get that word of mouth, right? Um, and those are the best referrals. You're going to convert those at the highest rate of any prospect you get. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. I mean, so just let's, um, yeah, so I mean, so good. I feel like I could talk to you for hours, Travis, because I'm like, <laughs> so many things. But um, yeah, I mean, these guys are here to help you. They're there to help educate you so you can continue to educate your clients on that why behind the cybersecurity, right? So if you guys have questions, like, please reach out to Travis, um, reach out to me and I can get you connected with Travis and his team. Um, if you have not already registered for the Q4, seven figure Q4 live event, Travis and his team are going to be there live and in person, um, ready to roll up their sleeves and help you guys, you know, tackle the cybersecurity game out there. Um, so if you guys are interested in attending that, I know Travis has like a special code he can give you and get you some free tickets, um, October 25th through 27th down in sunny Orlando, Florida. I checked today. It's still there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It was one of the first things I did too. Uh, I was like, oh man, I hope this doesn't disrupt the event because I know we, we already had to make one change. So, um, and I, I love these events cause I get to get a chance. I get the chance to talk to, my partners, I see them all in the same place. We have a lot of seven-figure um, MSPs in our, our partner program and um, just get to hear more about their world and maybe offer some tips and tricks that help them out. You know, we're all in this together. Um, one thing I love about security is, is I get to be a part of something good. You know, um, I get to help the, the fight against bad and be on the good side. So anytime I get to you know, help someone in any way. Um, we're all helping try to make the world a little bit better place. So I uh, hope to see you guys down there in Orlando and and uh, I'll buy you a beer and we'll talk security. Sounds like a plan. Well, I look forward to seeing you really soon in person, Travis, and your team. Um, and like I said, you guys reach out to Travis. Um, let us know if you guys have any questions and hopefully we'll see y'all in uh, sunny Florida in just a few weeks. Cool. Sounds good. Right. Thanks, Lisa. Bye, everyone.